everybody. Welcome to Snoozer's Storytime Adventures. How are we doing today, Snoozer? I'm a dragon. Roar! You're a dragon? I'm just pretending, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh my goodness. I think you're in the mood for some sort of fiction story. I have one that I could read you. Really? Yes, it's called My Father's Dragon. And it is a Newbery Honor Children's Classic by Ruth Stiles Gannett. All right. So as I said, there's a lot of pages in this, but I'm going to read you the beginning to get the feel of the book. My father meets the cat. One cold, rainy day when my father was a little boy, he met an old alley cat on his street. The cat was very drippy and uncomfortable. So my father said, wouldn't you like to come home with me? This surprised the cat. She had never before met anyone who cared about old alley cats, but she said, I'd be very much obliged if I could sit by a warm furnace and perhaps have a saucer of milk. We have a very nice furnace to sit by, said my father, and I'm sure my mother has an extra saucer of milk. My father and the cat became good friends, but my father's mother was very upset about the cat. She hated cats, particularly ugly old alley cats. Elmer Elevator, she said to my father. If you think I'm going to give that cat a saucer of milk, you're very wrong. Once you start feeding stray alley cats, you might as well expect to feed every stray in town, and I'm not going to do it. This made my father very sad, and he apologized to the cat because his mother had been so rude. He told the cat to stay anyway, and that somehow he would bring her a saucer of milk each day. My father fed the cat for three weeks, but one day his mother found the cat's saucer in the cellar, and she was extremely angry. What do you think, Snoozer? Do you think that you would take that cat home and feed it? I would because I really like kitty cats. I do too. All right, so the boy becomes good friends with the cat and the mom says that he can't stay there, but he still finds a way to get together with the cat. And one day they're walking through the woods and the father says, when I grow up, I'm going to have an airplane. Wouldn't it be wonderful to fly just anywhere you might think of? Would you like to fly very, very much? asked the cat. I certainly would. I'd do anything if I could fly. Well, said the cat, if you'd really like to fly that much, I think I know of a sort of a way you might get to fly while you're still a little boy. You mean you know where I can get an airplane? Well, not exactly an airplane, but something even better. As you can see, I'm an old cat now, but in my younger days, I was quite a traveler. My traveling days are over, but last spring I took just one more trip and sailed to the island of Tangerina, stopping at the port of Cranberry. Well, it just so happened that I missed the boat, and while waiting for the next, I thought I'd look around a bit. I didn't know cats could talk. Well, apparently they do in this story, because this is a fiction story. It's, it's just a, a, a fun fantasy story. I wish cats talked to me. I know, I do too. I wish all the animals could speak. I was particularly interested in a place called Wild Island, which we had passed on our way to Tangerina. Wild Island and Tangerina are joined together by a long string of rocks, but people never go to Wild Island because it's mostly jungle and inhabited by very wild animals. So I decided to go across the rocks and explore it for myself. It certainly is an interesting place, but I saw something there that made me want to weep. Do you know what weep means? Weep? Weep? Um, nope. Well, weep means to cry. So the cat saw something that made him very, very sad. And what he saw was a dragon fall from the sky because its wing was broken 
And do you know what they did to that dragon? Did they give him food? No, they did not give him food. They tied him up around his neck and they used the dragon to go from one side of the island to the other because there was a big river right running through it. Why would they do that? Well, I guess they didn't feel like walking and they found a, a mighty fast way to do it by using the dragon. So, the cat comes up with the plan. And he tells the boy, maybe you should go to this island so you can save the dragon and get a chance to fly as well. What a good idea! All right, so they plan this adventure that they're going to go to the island. Well, not the cat, just the boy. The cat is too old, of course. So the boy packs his sack, and he packs it with some very interesting things. And these things are going to be very important as the story goes on. Do you want to know what he packed? Yes, of course I do! All right, these are the things that he packed in a sack. He took chewing gum, two dozen pink lollipops. Do you know how many two dozen would be? Twelve is one dozen. Mm-hmm. Two dozen is 12 plus 12. Um, oh, I don't know. It's 24. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Silly snoozer. Yes, 12 plus 12 is 24. So he brought his chewing gum, 24 pink lollipops, a package of rubber bands, black rubber boots, a compass, a toothbrush, a tube of toothpaste, Six magnifying glasses, a very sharp jackknife, a comb, a hairbrush, seven hair ribbons of different colors, an empty green bag with a label saying cranberry, some clean clothes, and enough food to last while he was on the ship. And he couldn't live on mice, so he took 25 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and six apples, because that is all the apples that he could find in his pantry. Oh my goodness! He would really need a big baggie to carry all that stuff! I think he did. I think he did. So he used a knapsack and then climbed on board the ship that was going to take him to find the dragon. How long did he travel for? Many days and many nights. All right, but he does. He finally makes it. He hops into that bag that he had that said cranberry on it, and he got dropped off in the right spot by the sailors. And here's a picture of the island. So here is Wild Island, and it has a river that goes all the way through it. But if you're on one side of the island and you want to get to the other side, you have to walk all the way around the river, and people don't want to do that. So that's why they use the dragon to fly across. All right, so he goes across, and he meets many, many, many different animals. He meets some mouse. He meets some tortoises. I met a tortoise one time. Did you? Yes. There's all kinds of animals in here, and they say that this is a very dangerous place. But somehow, the boy outwits them all, using some of the things in his sack. There's two boars who are very, very suspicious of different things they keep finding. Then he meets some tigers, but somehow manages to distract them. And then he meets a rhinoceros who says he's going to eat him, but somehow the boy outwits him too, using something from that sack. Then he meets a lion who he manages to distract with something from his sack. And then he meets a gorilla. I love gorillas. Yes, the gorilla is kind of like the gatekeeper, so he keeps an eye on that dragon and makes sure everything is safe. But somehow he manages to distract the gorilla so he can get across. But he needs to get to the other side. And the only way through the other side is to go through a stream that is full of crocodiles. Oh, no! 
on top. But don't worry, Snoozer. He finds something. So this is the end of the story, and it, it is called My Father Makes a Bridge. My father walked back and forth along the bank, trying to think of some way to cross the river. He found a high flat pole with a rope going over the top. The rope went through a loop to the top of the pole and down the pole and around the crank. And a sign said, to summon dragon, yank the crank, report disorderly conduct to gorilla. From what the cat had told my father, he knew that the other on the other end of the rope was the dragon's neck. And he felt sorrier than ever for the poor dragon. The gorilla would twist his wings until it hurt so much that he'd have to fly to the other side. If he were on the other side, the gorilla would crank the rope until the dragon would either choke to death or fly back. What a life for a baby dragon. My father knew that if he called to the dragon to come across the river, the gorilla would surely hear him. Oh, dear. So... He hears a voice as he's by the water, and it says, It's me, crocodile, said a voice to the left. The water is lovely. I have such a craving for something sweet. Won't you come in for a swim? A pale moon came out from behind the clouds, and my father could see where the voice was coming from. The crocodile's head was just peeping out of the water. Oh, no, thank you, said my father. I never swim after sundown, but I do have something sweet to offer you. Perhaps you'd like a lollipop, and perhaps you have friends who would like lollipops, too. I would like a lollipop. Yes, and remember, he's got 24 of them. Maybe there's enough for you. <laughs> lollipops, said the crocodile. Why, what a treat. How about it, boys? A whole chorus of voices shouted, hooray, lollipops. And my father counted as many as 17 crocodiles with their heads just peeping out of the water. That's fine, said my father as he got out the two dozen pink lollipops and the rubber bands. I'll stick one here in the bank. Lollipops last longer if you keep them out of the water, you know. Now, one of you can have this one. The crocodile who had first spoken swam up and tasted it. Mmm, delicious! Mighty delicious! Now, if you don't mind, said my father, I'll just walk along your back and fasten another lollipop to the tip of your tail with a rubber band. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, not in the least, said the crocodile. Can you just get your tail out of the water just a bit, asked my father. Yes, of course, said the crocodile, and he lifted up his tail. And then my father ran along his back and fastened another lollipop with a rubber band. Who's next, said my father. And the second crocodile swam up and began sucking on the lollipop. Now you gentlemen can save a lot of time if you just line up across the river, said my father. And I'll be along to give you each a lollipop. Do you see what the boy has done, Snoozer? Yes, he is distracting the crocodiles. He is distracting the crocodile and look what he does. He ties each lollipop to the tail of the crocodiles and he finds a way to get to the other side to save the dragon! Yes! A bridge of crocodiles! It is a bridge of crocodiles. Isn't that amazing? He is such a clever boy. Well, now once he gets to the other side to save the dragon, animals start to cross too. But, the boy learns that the crocodiles are very moody, so even though he used them to get across, once the animals went on there, the crocodiles being the moody animals they are, they start to separate and the animals can't get to the other side. All right, so the boy uses that knife that he brought on his trip and he cuts the rope and when they saw that the animals couldn't get to them, they laughed themselves weak because it was such a silly sight. As soon as they recovered, my father finished cutting the rope and the dragon raced around in circles trying to turn a somersault. He was the most excited baby dragon that ever lived. My father was in a hurry to fly back. And when the dragon finally calmed down a bit, my father climbed onto his back. All aboard, said the dragon. We shall go. 
As my father and the dragon passed over the ocean rocks, they heard a tiny, excited voice scream, Bumkak! Bumkak! We greed our nagin! I mean, we need our dragon! But my father and the dragon knew that nothing in the world would ever make them go back to Wild Island. Was he flying on the dragon? Yes, and look, he wanted to fly and he gets to fly. And he saves the dragon in the end. So he helped the dragon and he helped himself make his wish come true. I love that story. And you know what? What? I actually met some of those animals in real life. And one time, I got to feed a rhinoceros. You are kidding me. Now I really want to finish the book. And you will be very excited to find out how he distracts the rhinoceros. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with his horn. But you'll have to read the book to find out. You know what? What? I am on the edge of my seat. You look like you are on the edge of your seat. And there's also a sticker on here that says it's a Netflix film. So after you read the book, maybe we can watch that on Netflix. All right, well, I'm in the mood to do a song. And I think I'm going to kind of make up something that has to do with that story about a boy. And he's searching for a dragon. All right, you want to hear it? Yes! All right, it goes like this. The boy went searching for a dragon, a dragon. The boy went searching for a dragon, a dragon. He wanted to fly across the sky, so he searched and searched for a dragon nearby. Oh, the boy went searching for a dragon, a dragon, a dragon. The boy needed to get across the river, the river. The boy needed to get across the river, the river. He used some crocs and some lollipops to make a bridge and get across. And he saved himself and the dragon, the dragon, the dragon. Is it over? Yes, it's over. I really enjoyed that song. Did you make it up? I did make it up, but I used the ideas from the story because he used some crocs and some lollipops to get across the river. Oh, that was such a creative story. Yes, yes, and I love seeing all the animals. I know, there are so many animals in the jungle. And at the zoo! That's right, the earth is full of wonderful, beautiful animals. But I'm kind of in the mood to make myself a dragon. Well, these are the two sheets we are going to be using today to make ourselves a dragon, a dragon. So I'm going to cut up the pieces and then we're going to put him or her together. Okay. That's a lot of pieces. It is a lot of pieces, but it's a dragon, and dragons have a lot of parts. They've got the wings, and the eyes, the tail. All right, so I think I'm going to put on the wings first. How do I want my wings to go? Do you think they should go up, or should I have them going down? Make them going down! All right. Things are going down. So I'm going to put a little glue here and then I'm going to lift the project up. All right. Now it looks like a cape. Yeah, it kind of does. A dragon superhero. All right. Then we can work on the arms. So we can have the arms going out like this. Kind of like standing like a superhero, huh? 
Okay. Now the fun stuff. I'll put a little glue here for the tail. And this goes right at the end of the tail. All right, and now for the fun stuff. The eyes. What do you think? How do you like my dragon? I love this dragon. And he looks like a superhero. He kind of does. So I'm already getting some ideas for writing. Maybe we could read some more books from the library about dragons too. Well, I had a great time with you today, snoozer. So I look forward to seeing you next time, all right? Yes, I hope we read another fun story next time. For sure we will. All right, well, I will see you and all our friends next time. Bye. Would you like to do the Mrs. Hamilton craft just like me? Guess what? You can! Head to your local library for all the materials that we use in the craft. Plus